I'm wearing a mask because one guy has COVID-19. I'm very paranoid. The reason why I wanted to have this environmental video today. We are vegan for the animals, but if there's no world to live in because of the environmental uh, pending doom, then there won't be any animals anyway. That's exactly what it's all about. Vegans don't seem to realize that we are in a environmental emergency. United Nations say more of a problem than climate change is the pressing issue of water drought, water reduction, how much fresh water we have in existence. If the United Nations say this, then fine, use that data. Once it is taken away from the fact that it's number one, once it's relegated, not, not only belittles the issue, also offers the meters to disregard the petty things, they will call it. So we need doctors for the health factor, vegan scientists for the environmental factor. You found that Dr. Richard Oppenlander is a great advocate for this in Cowspiracy, was the first time you've met him. He talks about things the other guys are not, I think he has a very good approach. He is a consultant for World Economic Forum, creating his own calculations, which astounds other scientists. He gives the sources the raw data for them to recalculate themselves. The statistics that he brings up is actually conservative. It's the lowest side of the percentages that we're dealing with in the doom scenario. It's the number one cause of environmental destruction. Talk to the non-vegans. I tell them that even if it was the second cause or the third cause or even the, the last cause, what justifies you contributing to it and financing it? Both hydrogeology and geochemistry also study historic water usage and its pollution, history which we are doomed to repeat as we forget its weaponization. Listeners can Google their own country's current position on water legislation, and millions will be surprised when they find that one abstention about one part of its legal framework renders today their whole country as a water denier. That's denying water as a basic human right. Despite the statistical removal of damn displaced peoples and only recording conflicts that don't interfere with certain capitalisms, we halve the historic period here. We see examples of poisoning wells or besieging with drought also half, but they are no less potent, as off map exists China, 1642, where 300,000 quelled peasants led to the joint military drowning of China's capital, Kaifeng, uninhabitable for 50 years. Even the Chernobyl nuclear disaster had a faster turnaround for tourists. Now spanning the 19th century, for the same amount of historically remembered conflicts, America holds the majority of records. 20th century has 12.6 times more conflicts. From this point on, it's pretty much the same countries and continents suffering. A similar amount of centennial conflict, but squeezed into just a decade, 220 conflicts. So we can see why the UN see this as the number one concern, the age of bombing water infrastructure. In the latest recorded decade, from the 466 conflicts, 204 of them are plotted in the Middle East. I stress again, damn displaced peoples are not classified as a conflict to the website creators there. All those counts are expunged. They name the Middle East as Western Asia. The majority count has changed from bombing water, like this civilian sabotage that denied water for 10 million Indians for four days, into civil war, where up to 80% are rural fighting due to water being airstriked. By just one torn area desiccates 20 million people. Water is targeted, whether it's a lowly pipe, pump, truck, purification or desalination centre, a well, fountain, main water tank, canal, dam, redirected river, sewage treatment or hydroelectric project. And whilst 50,000 flee in Mali, 350,000 are affected in Donetsk, Ukraine, it's still a relentless nightmare in Yemen, while 1 million Ethiopians are forced to up and leave and 3 million Ukrainians can't trust their supply. That's before the war. This will worsen whether it's east or west because we reiterate, nature's water is easy money. On both sides of every civil war, charge to repair, own the land, its water, and then the people to feed the remaining water to create meat for the rich. Water for me and fines for thee. The above translates to 189,000 litres per household use, plus another 4.788 million litres due to the average household's so-called meat-eating propensities, which is almost two Olympic swimming pools full of water. You there, flush less, shower together. In fact, 
Use the toilet water to digest your half a trillion dollar subsidized meat and dairy. The above saves up to 11.3 litres, whereas we could easily choose to save 3,800 litres instead. The genius here is legally robbing another country's water, buying the land and exporting the intensive produce produced by the scant resource. Both governments are happy with the money and the money to be, while the cattle's eyes are gouged out and the people are fined for watering the garden. How to visualize 14,000 acres? Well, imagine running a whole marathon across fields, but 67 times, that's 890 kilometers, or planting one line of seeds across the full length of Britain. While US water boards piss away the liquid gold in the form of leaks to the tune of 7.6 trillion litres per year, but at least that's clean water that may seep back into the groundwater table. If we start to talk about the animals, it's harder to deal with the whole subject. To understand the water intake of large sentient life and things you don't want seeping into the water table, consider this diarrhea machine by no fault of her own. I don't think anyone has ever calculated before how many cartons of those 12% solids would create. Well, now you know. You're welcome. Just bear in mind, there are 1.5 billion bovines murdered per year, just like her. Daily water footprint ingredients of a half a ton by weight Holstein Friesian, displaying the confusing Paris synonyms of roughage, forage, fodder, and silage, which comprises half her diet. The near quarter leftovers are mixed with, well, more leftovers, which you start to see shouldn't go past the mouth of a herbivore or even a human for that matter. But there's still all this to inject, so meters can steal the likes of 4% B12 from her liver instead of eating fortified cereal, plant milk, and marmite. So-called feed concentrates are the added vitamins, minerals, and medicine administered to cattle, each with its own water process. So now we can visualize Oppenlander's calculation of omega 4.35 trillion liters quench and drench for just US cows and understand 123.78 trillion liters used to grow their food. The Great Lakes hold 18% of the world's supply of fresh water and could cover all North America in one meter deep water. But... 310.40 trillion litres per year that cannot be returned, unless a country can thank you back with a few cyclones. To picture that amount, think of all the water flowing over Niagara Falls in tourist flow mode. An Olympic swimming pool would be filled in less than one second. Yet this annual loss of virtual water is equivalent to Niagara's flow for three years and five months. In Oppenlander's neck of the woods, he'd be feeling it for at least four years in a row. So Mongolia won the drought intensity contest here with a mega drought. They are turning to sand. However, California continued its drought for a 22-year period, worse than any time in a minimum of 1,221 years. Well done, Kali. As we recall Yemen's civil war, here Syria relate. As California struggled with six million cattle, Check Pakistan out. 53 million cattle. Please comment. Does your city or country plague the water supply? Or are they cheap, clean, and respectful? How much precious water is wasted in your country? How is your experience? Did you work for a water company and would like to whistleblow a backup to this number one threat? Or for a sector that's polluting or flicking away aquavitae right now? Strength in numbers is the only way to win this. Vegans few percent of practicing what they preach is swallowed up as charities cannot legally lobby the governmental hand that feeds them. Environmental prisoners can only wish they were helping the front lines again. What global news agencies have addressed our pressing threat? Once in Poland, once in English, one Italian, one German. So about one agency annually for four years. Then it's evaporated news. Doesn't matter that this warning came from a world's leading expert, policy analyst and engineer, Dr. Arian Y. Hukstra, the godfather of this water footprint. A 10-year study of every country's main river, concluding nutritionally, plant crops always have a smaller water footprint than any animal product. A warning for the 4 billion humans affected by overuse of their rivers and subterranean reserves. The unnecessary 29% of the world's water supply funneled through enslaved livestock. Not a majority used for industrial products. It's 29% of water that could be resolved right now by not buying another meat product. As for godfather of the carbon footprint, Dr. Bill Rees quotes, we cannot rely on the capitalist imagination that technologies will solve our deficits. Before refining domestic and industrial water footprints, a policy must shift away from meat-rich diets. Four billion already drought for at least a whole month of the year, 
rich or poor, southern or northern hemisphere, as water dries up, tensions rise, war ensues, runoff is polluted by the effluence of affluence, availability declining as evil slaughters 150 billion land animal mouths per year. The lush rainforests like Amazonian and Borneo are the capitalist target for exploitation. Here's Borneo since 1950. The Amazon replaced with soy feed for slaughtered bovine, timbered, mined, as in the area of Peru, now a sandstorm. We have all the open access data we need. It's invariably the number one issue to instantly mitigate. The inputs and outputs, the rot, that is globalization, and all exploits and yet, fresh water is not even listed near a tipping point. The IPCC, in March 2022, even downplaying its concern, despite being in the middle of a war. Fear the technology, it's been weaponized before, for instance, in the Vietnam War. The United States used cloud seeding to prolong the monsoon season and disrupt the Viet Cong supply chain. Weather warfare is, in fact, prohibited under an international treaty. Release these chemicals into the clouds directly, or you can use dispersers on the ground. China, though, prefers to use rockets, so fires shells full of silver iodide into the air. Do you think it would be a solution to, to use this particular technology of getting water from the oceans? Yes, to uh, with technology. It is technologically possible to have desalinization plants to convert seawater into fresh drinking water, like we have in Gibraltar or Gibraltar, Almeria. They start off expensive. They are cheap versions too, being created by even a student to save lives. And yet, where does it go? The patent is bought. It's never surfaced. It's never manufactured. It's taken away. Because water is the last resource that we, the world is going to be paying for through the teeth, through taxation. The example of China buying fresh air in canisters, putting a nozzle over their face. 17 million residents woke up to surprisingly heavy snow cloud seeded with 186 doses of silver iodide greatly enhanced the snowstorm. Technology, and unfortunately since the 1970s, that was what the scientists thought, that we can defeat all this in a capitalist society, just buy what we need from another country if we get low in something, no issues. Cloud seeding technology. Billions of euros employ tens of thousands of people in their weather modification bureau, spanning five and a half million square kilometers. That's one and a half times the size of India. Instead of having this solution, simply stop eating animals that are quickly killed for meat and then that blood, feces and urine with the antibiotics, pesticides, insecticides, fungicides, herbicides, they're all leaching into the water supply, polluting cholera and other malarial issues associated with the mosquitas. 45 minutes before you're seeing the maximum result. And that's why we're stationed miles away from our target areas. Open Lander, who talks about this in, in Conspiracy. Another solution, we could stop eating animals. And it, and it would be done today. It doesn't have to take 20 years. And it certainly doesn't have to take $18 trillion because it costs nothing. The United Arab Emirates started using drones equipped with electric shock devices to form rain. And, and it worked, posted by the Emirati Met. There are simple, sustainable alternatives, like this ice stupa. Water is a bare necessity, and without over-exploitation, it's sustainable. This definition is far better than future debated definitions. It's a service to sentience, not purely for self. Solutions of knowing is to raise awareness like this video. Tell people to subscribe to the world you need to be. There will be obstacles, cognitive dissonance, and defense of greed. There will be institutionalized hypocrisy and oxymorons from the prestigious propaganda from the very recesses that claim to help. You need to cut through the brain-dirtying miasma to become a well-informed role model. Consider holding screenings yourself and join meetings. Examples, XR scientists, Animal Aid UK for schools, and all the key stages after. Join Discord group Environmental Science and News. We have a safe place within for vegans too. Whether Rumble or YouTube, Twitter or TikTok, Insta or Snap, ways to better get your awareness heard. Pioneer the up-and-coming True Social or Meta. Start with a local search. Environmental or smart vegan groups can lead to WhatsApp, to video meetings, watch Seaspiracy documentary. Earthlings, if you are brave, if you are still not environmental, then meditate why. See what impressive examples can do. 
then demand your tax to pay into what the earth needs. To defeat the incessant antitheses, there's inspireawarenessnow.org or comfortablyunaware.com, challenge22.com for free pro-dietary help, or in Spain, it's vegano22.com. There's a majority of helpers and those that need help to transition into a non-corrupt utopia. Even if you think you have medical or financial issues and think you can't achieve this hive mind dream, there are sustainable technologies to utilize once we change ourselves first. Even if you are not a policymaker, a business owner, or a community leader, you can influence every one of them, starting from the choice of your next meal. Some of you have the experience to know that one alone cannot change even a corporation from within, but your tongue is not as powerful. Even a seed can be planted within your own friends and family. Even healthcare professionals to funding sources can be educated by you. Even animal aid took decades to turn vegan. But without your own inquiry, you're paying into everyone's demise by the world's billionaires. If your ideology doesn't exist, establish it. PETA paid for COVID-suffering meat packers to train in plant-based factories. No more PITS. Vegan lobbyists, as long as they are not mercenary rotating door users, they'll persuade with the truth and heart, not money and flesh. There are bright ideas all the time, and we are all interconnectedly lifting the veil, sweeping away the cobwebs. We can preserve one million litres of drinking water, whether in the deserts of Kenya or the slopes of the Himalayas, and that's without radical engineering. As long as intellect merges with the balance of nature, no more fossil fuels or nuclear radiation, there are real humanitarians out there, making a change however they know how, turning this barren wasteland, spinning desertification, into verdancy, as it was before and shall be again. Scorching valleys of death simply need not to be. It's up to even you to decide what your grandchildren will play or die with. There's no regreening lives you have already consumed, but you can make your body a temple again, not an abattoir. We even have natural ways to break down mankind's mess plus share techniques that uplift millions of people again. This is not being dealt a bad hand. We have the power to swap our cards. Plant biochar first creates the foundation to grow again. No animal killing, just light, manual, organic gardening. Nitrogen fixing plants resoil the sand, while fog catchers provide the water. A lot of free drinking water and have large durable versions for windy environments. Decades have passed, taught in many more areas, fortified and saving countless lives even for low humidity environs. That is, if it breaks through the barriers that are set up by the powers that want to be, even the richest countries in the world have oppression. But it's clear, with Water Footprint Network, UNESCO Hydro Education, and the researchers blowing the whistle, that we are gambling our own futures with a house that always wins. Some more numbers to visualize and bear in mind, noting their food groups, versus the exploitative carnage, noting their former sentience. Some even had names. And here we have in ascending order the water needs per kilogram of assorted food. Vegetables and fruit, grains, peanut, and then beef that blows the rest away with its evil overindulgence. Those who have a heart are already wearing old clothes or second-hand wear because they have researched cloth mountains. And even the full reasons of concern that make up a cradle-to-grave impact, showing animal byproduct to fail hands down. In this fresh millennium, the process of leather boots won't cut it anymore. So of course, we choose ethical alternatives that don't give cancerous leg blisters to workers. We revel in old hemp, jute, and flax textile, as much as we do new pineapple, agave, and lorica. New technology is dispelling megalomaniacal myths, and newer environmental satellites are breaking into operation, even to dedicatedly synergize. We are one. Bye-bye for now. Catch you later. I can't hear you. You now you're ringing me. Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, pen. Try to limbo under the the video and suddenly edit edits out my bare legs of the video. <laughs> uh, hey legs, and and I thought you guys don't have any. Any, I don't any, know. any hair? That is not not legs. Do the Vikings shave shave their legs with a remak? Or do they look like uh, Pan from the bottom down, Goat Boys? I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm like a Pan.